The World of Transistor Radios, brought to you by the Electronic Industries Association of Japan. This is going to be fun. Get all tucked in, folks. This bedtime story starts in just 10 seconds. The World of Transistor Radios. A whole new era of listening enjoyment opened for Americans a few years ago when the first truly compact transistor radios appeared on the market. What started out as a novel idea bloomed into a full-scale revolution affecting our very way of life. Making it possible to carry the world around in a pocket, the transistor radio gave a lift to the radio industry and helped raise the economy of the country. So widely accepted has this new concept of personalized radio listening become that radio stations have evolved new broadcasting techniques, designing programs to appeal to pocket radio listeners. The old-style bulky portable radio, often toted along only to the beach and picnic grounds, rapidly disappeared to be replaced by the handsomely styled light, compact transistor radio. Its sensitivity and inexpensive long-life batteries are two more features accounting for the transistor radio's great popularity. Today, nearly every home has at least one of the miniature radios. One for each family member is common. A desk model keeps the businessman alert to the day's happenings. The housewife puts hers in her apron pocket and has a constant companion as she works from room to room. The teenager, truck driver, postman, office worker all have found their own particular uses for the versatile miniature receiver that has become the voice of the 20th century. What is a transistor radio? Though millions own them, few people really know just what a transistor radio is, how it differs from other radios, and how it can be made so small and yet so powerful. Basically, all radios perform the same function. Using an antenna to receive broadcasting signals, radios translate the signals into electrical impulses and send those impulses to a vibrating device, such as a speaker or earphone. Our ears pick up the vibrations as sound. The job of tubes or transistors is to help the radio perform this function with a high degree of efficiency. How well the radio performs depends on several things, including circuit design, antenna size, and on the number and quality of the tubes or transistors. The size and quality of the radio speaker determines how well the radio sounds. Today's transistor will perform nearly all the functions of the receiving tube, with the added advantage of small size, low voltage requirements, and almost total lack of heat production. This means that a six-transistor portable can be expected to perform better than the old standard four-tube portable, while being much smaller, lighter, and requiring smaller and less expensive batteries. How many transistors? Generally speaking, the number of transistors in a radio determines performance potential. However, atmospheric and geographic conditions can influence your transistor radio's ability to receive a given broadcast. The above drawing demonstrates how extreme conditions can affect the reception range of a 1,000-watt radio station broadcasting at 1,000 kilocycles. For purposes of illustration, arbitrary sensitivity standards were set for each type of transistor radio. Today, single-band AM radios capable of receiving radio broadcasts in the standard band, 535 to 1605 kilocycles, employing from 3 to 10 transistors, are the most popular type. Six is considered to be the number of transistors needed for good reception of most radio signals in urban and suburban areas. The drawing below illustrates some of the more important parts of a typical six-transistor radio and indicates the function of each part. The diode acts mostly as a detector or rectifier, eliminating all but the audible part of a radio signal. All transistor radios contain one or more diodes. More transistors. AM radios using seven or more transistors can be expected to perform better than the average six. The extra transistors, depending on the radio's design, increase sensitivity or volume output. 
Radios with seven or more transistors are recommended for use in locations distant from transmitters or when greater volume is desired. One and two transistors. Special mention should be made of one and two transistor radios. Such radios can be expected to perform only when near a radio transmitter. They are not recommended for use in fringe reception areas. Because of their limited ability, all one and two transistor radios manufactured in Japan have the words boys radio or toy radio imprinted either on the front or back of the cabinet. Multiband radios. Two methods of radio broadcasting are in common use today. Amplitude modulation, AM, and frequency modulation, FM. The AM transmitted signal can be expected to travel further. The shorter FM transmitted signal will allow for better sound reproduction. Internal regulations and international agreements control broadcasting activities on different frequencies. The radio frequency guide below indicates the frequency band allocations as they affect the United States. Receivers designed to reproduce signals transmitted on two or more of the frequency bands are called multiband radios. The standard broadcast band is commonly indicated by one of the following BC, SBC, MW, AM, or broadcasting. The FM band is occasionally marked VHF. AM-FM The AM-FM radio, best known type of all the multiband radios available, can reproduce radio broadcasts on the FM frequencies from 88 to 108 megacycles, as well as the standard band. FM radios generally have one or sometimes two dynamic speakers and provide almost static-free radio reception. These features have made the FM radio a must for serious music listeners. Broadcasters in many areas offer a wide variety of musical programs, which can be picked up only on FM radio receivers. Many of the AM-FM radios now coming from Japan are designed to accept adapters, permitting the reproduction of FM stereophonic radio broadcasts. BC Shortwave International shortwave broadcasting is conducted on the frequencies between 2 and 28 megacycles. However, few if any of the BC SW transistor radios available today are equipped for full-range shortwave reception. Because of the extreme width of the shortwave band, many BC SW SW or three-band radios have been produced. In this type of radio, the two shortwave bands divide the busiest of the shortwave frequencies, making for easier station selection. Many foreign English language programs are beamed directly toward the United States. With the shortwave radio, you can listen to news and opinions from every major and many of the smaller nations of the world. The quality of the radio, your location, and international atmospheric conditions all will affect shortwave radio reception. Many of the radio magazines publish news of interest to shortwave radio owners, including monthly forecasts of shortwave radio receiving conditions. BC Marine and BC Marine Long Wave Designed with the boat owner in mind, the marine transistor radio operates at from about 2 to 3 megacycles. The long wave band receives signals at from 150 to 400 kilocycles. In the marine band can be found ship-to-ship -ship and ship-to-shore radio transmissions, including those of the United States Coast Guard. In the United States, weather data and navigational beacon signals are transmitted in the long wave frequencies. Properly adapted long wave receivers can be used as a navigational aid by small boats. The use of long wave frequencies for public broadcasting is common in European countries. Other combinations. Various other multiband radios may be found on the market, such as BC FM SW or BC FM Marine. These simply combine some of the features of the other more standard multiband types. Novelty radios. 
Electronic developments making the miniaturization of radios possible have resulted in the production of more useful kinds of radios. One of the newest is the pocket clock radio, a combination of a fine watch and a high-quality receiver. The clock radio can be set to turn itself on and off automatically. The clock is either hand-wound or draws its power from batteries, depending on design. Other combinations, such as desk set radios and various ornamental radios, contain varying numbers of transistors and should be judged accordingly. Quality control. Electronics is Japan's most modern industry. All radios and other electronic products are checked for quality through each production step and are inspected again before they leave the factory. Recognizing the need for industry-wide quality standards, Japan established an independent inspection laboratory to protect Japan's hard-earned reputation for high-quality electronic products. The laboratory's quality inspection is performed on each individual shipment of radios destined for export. The radios are checked for general appearance and workmanship. Electronic inspection covers such performance factors as sensitivity and static filtration. Also, special testing facilities have been established in Japan to assure that radios exported to the United States comply with applicable Federal Communications Commission regulations. The system of mandatory inspection of export radios was established by Japan on a voluntary basis. The independent laboratory is supported by an inspection fee charged regardless of whether the radio passes inspection. The severe export inspection standards assure you that the Japanese radio you buy will meet all the performance requirements of its class. Guarantees and Service Nearly all Japanese radios are sold with a written guarantee or warranty. Read your guarantee, become familiar with its terms, and keep it in a safe place. Your guarantee will tell you where to send your radio should service become necessary. Remember, with transistor radios, as with any product, your best assurance of honest value and dependable service is to buy from a reliable dealer. Radio Care Transistor radios are not indestructible. The case may be of high-impact plastic, but hard knocks can ruin transistors, damage circuit connections, or otherwise injure radio mechanisms. Your radio's case and electronic components can be permanently damaged by high heat, so keep your radio off ovens and radiators. Protect your radio from prolonged exposure to strong sunlight and from sudden extreme changes in temperature. Battery Radio repairmen state that many of the transistor radios brought to them suffer from nothing more than weak batteries. Lack of volume and loss of tone quality are frequent indications that your radio batteries are running low and need replacement. The acid from a leaking battery can damage your radio beyond repair, so replace weak batteries immediately. And for safety's sake, never store your radio for more than a week without first removing the batteries. The following page illustrates in actual size the different batteries used in Japanese transistor radios. Indicated for each battery are equivalent model numbers of most popular battery brands. Consult the illustrated battery size guide and the battery specification information supplied with your radio, and you can be sure that you will buy the correct replacement batteries. How often you will need to replace your transistor radio batteries depends on many factors, including two not commonly known, length of sustained playing time and the playing volume. Operating your transistor radio at a volume no louder than necessary and making sure your radio is completely turned off when not in use are two ways of increasing battery life. Battery Guide Batteries Illustrated Actual Size one and a half volt, commonly known as flashlight type, these 1.5 volt batteries are used in combinations of from two to six per radio. Japan's contributions to the transistor radio industry. It is generally acknowledged that Japanese radio manufacturers developed the transistor radio industry. 
Though the first transistor was invented in the Bell Telephone Laboratories in 1948, it was not until 1956 when Japanese electronics manufacturers began mass production of personalized transistor radios that dealers in the United States were able to offer the product at a popular price. Today, Japan is recognized as a leading producer of high-quality transistor radios. Japan's radios are sold and enjoyed in nearly every nation in the free world. Japan's electronics manufacturers are proud of the part they played in the recognition and development of the transistor as a consumer-oriented product. The same highly skilled Japanese technicians who developed the shirt pocket transistor radio, the AMFM transistor radio, compact transistor tape recorder, miniature transistor television set, are today working to perfect new and better electronics products for you. This has been The World of Transistor Radios, prepared by the Electronic Industries Association of Japan, 5th Avenue, New York.